Johnny Dollar. Uh, Earl Poorman, Johnny, down here in Sarasota. Earl, you're a dog. What? A couple of weeks ago, when you dragged me down there to Florida, I thought you were going to take me out in the Gulf of some of those kingfish. Well, now, Johnny, Instead, I... Instead, we uh... ended up fishing a body out of the bayou. What, well, you don't think I planned that? Oh, no, I was only kidding. But if you're calling me about going down there for some fishing this time... Well, are you? Well, maybe we can get out in the Gulf while you're down here. While I'm down there for what? To find out what's happened to a policyholder of ours. Uh-oh. Another one of those mysterious disappearance things? No, no. I want you to find out, if you can, whether it was suicide or murder. Oh. I'll grab the first plane I can. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a... Cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing, too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Sarasota, Florida Office of Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the fancy bridge work matter. Expense account item one, $79 even. Plane fare and incidentals, Hartford to the International Airport at Tampa. Then a ferry plane to Sarasota, where I was met by Earl Porman, as usual, in a brand new air-conditioned car. Uh, you know something, Johnny? If I'd had any sense, I'd have met you in Tampa. Oh? Why do you say that, Earl? Well, because this murder, if it really was a murder, occurred on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, about 28 or 29 miles north of town. Yeah, I wondered why we were heading north on the Tamiami Trail. But you say, if it was murder. Well, if it was suicide, Johnny, if you can prove it, well, it'll take the company off the hook for some 40,000 bucks. Uh-huh. Who was the victim, the insured? A worthless tinhorn gambler by the name of Alfie Garber. Tinhorn, huh? What? Well, he must have had something to pay the premium on 40,000 worth of insurance. He paid exactly one of those premiums, Johnny. Uh -huh. Well, what happened? You remember the dog racing track south of town? Yeah, my pocketbook still carries a couple of scars from it. Well, Alfie's been losing his shirt out there night after night. He's not only borrowed everything he can get his hands on, moved into a third-rate motel, but well, he sold most of his wife's jewelry. Uh-huh. They've been practically living on handouts. Police think maybe he's responsible for a couple of robberies around town, but they haven't been able to prove anything. Really? In other words... Alfie's been in pretty bad shape, mentally as well as financially. His wife told a doctor she was afraid he might commit suicide. So you got the picture? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Go on, huh? Well, last night, he and another punk by the name of Luke Thrasher got into a big fight there at the track. Luke is a pretty bad actor, by the way. And how do you mean that, Earl? Oh, there have been a couple of unexplained murders of people who tried to cross him up back in the past. By unexplained, you mean they couldn't pin them on him? Exactly. Oh, here now, we're on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Yeah, well, what'd they fight about? Oh, uh, seems Alfie had welched on a bet, a big one. 
and Luke told him if he didn't get out of town, he'd kill him. So? Three or four o'clock this morning, Alfie's wife was at police headquarters asking him to please find her missing husband. He hadn't come home from the track. No message from him, nothing. Is she the beneficiary of this policy? Yeah, yeah, she is. And Johnny, she's just about as worthless a character as her husband. Uh-huh. Todd Swam down at the Chamber of Commerce has been trying to figure some legitimate way to get them both out of Sarasota. Well, is there any reason to think Alfie didn't take the hint and just leave town? He was pretty scared of Luke Thrasher, made no bones about it. And you ask me, he had reason to be. So when she reported him missing, the police hauled Luke off to the clink. Figured he'd carried out his threat, huh? Until this morning, just before I called you. Oh, what happened? Ah, now here we are, coming to the center span of this bridge. Yeah, I see, yeah. Well, look, uh, what made the police change the... Highest line? span of any bridge in the state, Johnny. Uh, so I've heard. But, look, you didn't answer my question. Bridge is 15 miles long and over 100 feet high yeah, up there. Yeah, I, I see that. Several suicides off this thing. Well, Johnny. what has that got to do with Alfie Garber? Uh, you see the police car parked just ahead? Wow. Well, the reason they're looking things over is because that car in front of theirs is Alfie Garber's, right where he left it. And they figure he took the jump. A fishing boat down below found his hat and his jacket floating around in the bay. Oh, well, that doesn't prove suicide, Earl. Doesn't prove murder, either. Keep moving there, mister. Keep moving. <laughs> Hi, Lieutenant. What? Oh, you, Mr. Foreman. I kind of thought you'd be out here for a look at things. Uh, Lieutenant Dodge, this is Johnny Dollar. He's a special sure, investigator. Sure. Dal, I'm glad to see you again. Yeah, hiya, Lieutenant. Well, it looks like now we got something to work on around here. You will work with us, won't you? Why not? Well, wait a minute. What did you mean, Lieutenant? Mr. Foreman, we haven't found the body yet, but the evidence, mostly a torn piece of shirt and some blood we found here on one of the girders. Blood? Yeah, and a lot of scuff marks and things. Oh, there's no question there was a struggle before Garber was tossed off into the bay, a big one. Murder, huh? No question about it, Mr. Dollar. Well, then, Earl, it looks like your company's going to have to pay off the beneficiary. And my expense account, of course. Oh, now, why bring that up? What? As long as I'm here, do you mind if I look at that evidence you mentioned, Lieutenant? Help yourself, Dollar. So I did. The marks of a struggle, the patches of blood on the girder, even the hat and the coat that had been recovered from the body. And I was inclined to agree with Lieutenant Dodge. That is until... Hmm. Huh? What is it? Wait a minute. Let me see this jacket again. It was just an ordinary old tweed jacket, Dollar, and it's his all right. I checked it out with his wife. Yeah? Is she all broken up about him? Oh, not particularly. Luke Thrasher died, she might have been. I see. Hmm. No bullet holes or tears in this thing. Well, so he must have taken it off before the struggle. But, uh, what about this? What? Oh, why, that's just a feather from one of those seagulls that are flying around here all the time. Is it? Well, isn't it? Or is it a clue that Alfie Garber wasn't murdered after all? Huh? Yeah. Give a thought to that, Lieutenant. Now, just a minute, darling. How can this little feather prove that Alfie Garber wasn't murdered? Why, I didn't say a thing about proof, Lieutenant. Okay, you said clue. From a seagull, huh? What else? Well, what's the difference? Yes, what are you getting at, Johnny? Hey, Earl, does old Doc Crutcher still live up the street from you? Still does. Why? Now, wait a minute, Dollar. Yes, Lieutenant? You're going to work with me on this, huh? Absolutely. Then do you mind telling me why this feather has got you all excited? Well, I'm not exactly sure yet. Do you mind if I scrape a little of the blood off this girder? I sure do. That blood will be wanted for identification, for comparison. You mean if you find Garber's body? We'll find it, all right. We have to drag the whole bay. Good luck. Now, Dollar... Hey, swing us around, Earl, and head us back to Sarasota. Come on, swing us around. A uh, U-turn in the middle of this bridge? Mr. Foreman's right, Dollar. Go right ahead, Earl. I'm sure the lieutenant will be glad to hold back the traffic for us. Whatever you say, John. Okay, okay, make a U-turn. I'll hold things up for you. But, Dollar... Attaboy. But if I didn't like you, I didn't think you could help me. was going to hold up traffic for it. Yeah. Well, if he isn't any better at solving murders, he is going to need help on this case. Huh? 
Well, I thought you didn't think it was murder. Uh, of course, it's only a hunch, Earl. Because of that silly little feather you found? But if that came from a seagull, I'll eat my shirt. Look, will you please tell me what you're up to? After Dr. Crutcher looks over this sample of blood the lieutenant so kindly provided. Drive on, Earl. Dr. Les Crutcher, there on St. Amund's Key, is one of the most able men with a microscope I've ever known. He poured us a couple of drinks, took the blood sample, and retired to the tiny laboratory there at the back of his house. Then, after about 15 minutes... Now, Johnny, listen oh, to me, Oh, relax, you? Earl, relax and enjoy your drink. We may have to do some traveling around when the doc gets through with that specimen. Well, like where? If my hunch is right, that is. Well, Doc, what'd you find out? Johnny... Putting that under a lens took me back to the old days before I got my M.D., when I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life as a veterinarian. Chicken blood, huh? What? That's right. Though whatever made you think it was... Well, then that feather was a chicken feather? I kind of thought maybe it was, Earl. Now I'm sure. Well, then Alfie Garber wasn't murdered at all. Those marks of a struggle, the, the blood up there on that bridge, his, his hat and his coat, they were just planted there. Alfie planted them there. Which means the police can forget their earlier suicide theory, too, doesn't it? Right. Alfie staged the whole thing to make it look like murder so his wife could collect his insurance. Kind of looks that way, doesn't it? So all his wife has to do is collect the insurance, then meet him somewhere, and they'll be $40,000 richer. At least that's what she thinks. Only she's wrong. They're both wrong. Right, Johnny? One sure way to prove it out, Earl. Yes? How? Sure. Find Alfie Garber. Sure. Easy, Lieutenant. Just find Alfie Garber. So we're right back where we started from. Yep. Only trouble is that by now he could be a thousand miles away. Well, at least it takes that insurance company of yours off the hook. Yeah, I guess so. Kind of lets Luke Thrasher off the hook, too. Means his alibi really was airtight. His alibi? Yeah, Luke had witnesses to prove he was here in town at the time Alfie's car was left up on that bridge. Oh, I see. So I'd better arrange for Luke's release, I guess. Only hope he doesn't make trouble over being locked up. Well, now, those guys seldom do, Lieutenant. They're usually smart enough to try to keep peace with you boys. He's a smart one, all right. Maybe if I butter him up a bit... Hey, look, I borrowed one of Earl Poorman's cars. When you let Luke Thrasher out, tell him there's a car and chauffeur waiting to take him anywhere he wants to go. Okay, Johnny. Thanks. As I drove Luke to his little motel out south of town near the track, I hoped he might come up with some kind of a lead on Alfie Garber. After all, he followed the same route, year after year, made the same contacts. But I didn't get much help from him. Quite the contrary. Dollar, if I knew where to look for that punk, I might go after him myself. Oh? Why, Luke? I could kill that cheap little Welsh you. Only, uh, what's your interest in him? His attempt to defraud an insurance company? Oh. Slow down. Sure. What are you, anyway? I'm a special investigator for the insurance stop company. Stop the car, Donna. What? I said stop the car. Well, what's the matter, Luke? Private investigator, huh? That's right. That means you're a cop. And me, I don't like cops. Public, private, any kind. So keep away from me, Dollar, if you want to stay healthy. Oh. Yeah. Listen, Dollar. I'm listening. You ever hear that maybe I killed a couple of guys one time and got away with it? I heard. What about it, Luke? Just remember that, Dollar. Just remember that. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. 
Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the fancy bridge work matter. Hunches. Sometimes my salvation, sometimes the bane of my existence. It was a hunch that led to the discovery that all the evidence Alfie Garber had been murdered and thrown off the bridge, that all that evidence was trumped up, phony, obviously to mislead anyone looking for Alfie. And now I had a couple of hunches about Luke Thrasher. One, that his warning to stay out of his way was due to more than a simple hatred of cops. Two, well, this was a real wild one. But in spite of what he'd said, I had the distinct feeling he could somehow put me on Alfie Garber's trail. It was late by the time I got to Earl Foreman's house on St. Amund's Key. He and his wife had gone to bed. I poured myself a nightcap and sat down on the floor of the room to think things out. Huh? Hello? Earl, is Johnny Dollar there with you? Who's that? Oh, Johnny? Yeah. Well, this is Doc Crutcher. Oh. Listen, there was something about that blood specimen you brought me, that, that chicken blood. Yeah. I wasn't sure at the time, so I put it back under the microscope. And I found traces in it of a treponiasis virus. Very seldom found here in the South. So what about it, Doc? So I checked with some of the local vets to see if any of them knew whose poultry flock might have it around here. I thought such information might be of help to you. You were so right. And Johnny, that chicken could only have come from the farm of Andrew Pellucci. Out on Bee Ridge Road. Good for you, Doc. Mr. Pellucci is about to have a late visitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want? Don't you know what time it is? Yeah, and I'm sorry to get you out of bed. Oh, sure. Look, my name is Johnny Dollar. I want to know if a man named Alfie Garber bought a chicken from you yesterday. Huh? You waking me up in the middle of the night oh, and asking me, did he? Did no, he? no, he didn't. No, it was his wife. She bought the chicken. Oh, his wife? That's all right, that's right. Her and that man, uh... What, what that man? That'll look, that'll look, uh... Luke? That's all right, Luke. So what's your business you come around this way? Just don't worry about that. Don't worry, huh? You get me out of bed, you wake my chicken. Hey, look, I said I'm sorry. Oh, sure, wiser guy. Now, huh? wait a minute. What are you going to I'll report so... you to the cops you come around this way. Well, why don't you do just that? Good night, Mr. Pelosi. You think I wouldn't? You think I wouldn't, you wiser guy? want this time of night. You, Mrs. Garber? Huh? you mind if I come in? Oh, not just a minute, mister. I want you as an accessory to the murder of your husband. Me? What are you talking about? Real smart, you and Luke Thrasher. Real palsy-wowsy with him, weren't you? How long had you and Luke been planning this? What do you mean, mister? You crazy? Who are you? Racetrack bums, all three of you. Oh, now, wait and a Alfie minute. was losing his shirt, but Luke was doing all right. He was loaded. So what to do about Alfie, who was giving you nothing but grief? Get rid of him. You're crazy. I asked you, who are you? You made it known that Alfie was in bad shape, that he talked about committing suicide. And that's probably what gave you the idea for the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. There have been several suicides from it. That's what the cops said, isn't it? Alfie took the jump. Wrong. Because making it look like suicide would keep you from collecting his insurance. Now, listen, So it had you... to be a clear case of murder. That's why you spilled the chicken blood around when you left his car up I there. I spilled You, the... Mrs. Garber, yeah, you... After making sure that Luke Thrasher had an alibi, could prove he was in town at the time you left the car on the bridge? You're making a crazy guess, that's all. Oh, pretty good guess, isn't it? Because what it means is that Alfie was killed sometime before you left that so-called evidence up there. Evidence that would make it impossible to pin the murder on Luke. You think you can prove that? Why not? Or would you rather have me prove that you killed your husband? Me? Well... No, 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 listen. They've told me Luke is mighty clever. Maybe even clever enough to have made you commit the murder. No. No, I didn't. I swear it. You can't say you didn't have plenty of opportunity. Mister, listen to me. Yeah? Well, go on, go on. Tell me. How did you kill him? Where did you put his body? No. I didn't do it. Then if you don't want to burn for it, you've got to prove that. Can you? Well? Yeah. 
because Luke killed him. Luke did it. Can you prove that? Now, where's the body? I'm sure it wasn't dumped off the bridge, because if they'd find the body, they'd, they'd, they might be able to find the bullet holes or some other mark that would lead them to Luke Thrasher. So where'd he hide the body? Come on, baby, you better talk. <gasps> what? I'll be garbage, buddy. It's right where yours is going to be, darling. Huh? Take his gun away from him, Lena. Oh, yeah, sure, Luke. I got it. You know so much, it's got to be curtains for you, Dollar. Yeah, in tight in the middle of your back so it don't make any noise. Go on, Luke, kill him. Yeah, right. Hey, Luke, drop the gun. You better drop it to Luke, so help me, I'll pull this trigger. You two sisters, go ahead. All right, you want to pick him up, Johnny? Indeed I do, Lieutenant. Okay, now you two up against the wall. Hands up high and against the wall. That's the stuff, Johnny. And just what brought you around here? A complaint by one of our citizens. Seems that one Andy Pellucci owns a poultry farm. Well, he was a little bit annoyed by the way you got him out of bed a while ago just to find out that these two bought a chicken from him yesterday. So he called us up to report you. Uh... Just like you suggested to him. Bless Sandy Pellucci. Now, if you'll just help me climb in this window, I'll take care of these two for you. Luke Thrasher, in spite of all the pressure they put on him, still refused to talk. So it was Lena Garber who finally broke down and told the police where they could dig up Alfie's body. And yeah, the bullets in him came from the gun that Luke had held on me. So it's up to the courts. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford? Well, I'll call it a couple of hundred bucks. And you know something? I finally managed to get in some of that real great fishing in the Gulf with Earl Poorman. Really great. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the wrong man matter. A case with a real twist at the end of it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Barney Phillips, Edgar Staley, Peter Leeds, and Frank Gerstle. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Suspense follows on the CBS Radio Network. As you smoke at Duke, you get a sense of ease and comfort that grows with every puff. Because new king-size Duke is king-size in the filter, where it matters most. Radio 59, WROW. You know, we're all not experts on suits or stoves or automobiles, so before spending any money, we find out what makes one good. Aren't schools much more important? Shouldn't we know what a good school is really like? A free new booklet 
helps you to do this important job. It's called Yardsticks for Public Schools, published by the National Citizens Council for Better Schools. It suggests ways of sizing up a school and of ensuring a better education for your children. Send a card today for your free copy. Write Yardsticks and your name and address on a card. Mail it to Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York, 16 New York. That's Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York, 16 New York.